You've done a really good job in here. I mean, it looks really cool. It almost looks like a uh, comic shop. Man, I got to tell you, there was a ton of books this week. I mean, I went in there expecting to spend a lot of money and expecting to get a lot of books, but honestly, not this much. Um, almost like 20 books this week that I end up walking out of two different shops with, but I'm pretty happy with what I got. Is that my shirt? It's not your shirt. That definitely looks like one of my shirts. No, it's not your shirt. I'm pretty sure it's my shirt. It even has the little rip on the sleeve that mine does. That happened in the woods when I was digging that hole. Anyway, let's go ahead and look at the books that I picked up this week. Um, like I said, I got a bunch of Marvel and some independent ones. It looks like you got DC books, so I'll cover the Marvel ones I picked up this week. A ton of great stuff. First one, I'm kind of sticking with the Absolute Carnage. Um, the tie-ins, this is the Symbiote Spider-Man number one. I was pretty happy to get that one. It's not the variant cover, but that's okay. This main cover is pretty good. Um, another one I picked up was Absolute Carnage Scream number two, um, the variant cover. So I did find the variant for that one. That's kind of nice. I didn't read the first one. Did you check it out at all? No, I haven't gotten them all. I know it's a series that you're trying to get all the tie-ins, and that's pretty cool. Maybe I can borrow yours when you're done and maybe give it a read. Yeah, I really haven't read any of the Absolute Carnage ones. I've been meaning to, and they're already piling up because of all the tie-ins. Of course, the first issue was like a 80 page monster of a book and I didn't even read that yet so I definitely got to go back catch up on this series I've heard it's pretty good so it's it's worth giving a shot a uh, new series I was kind of excited to get this one and it's not exactly the cover I wanted I wanted that Shannon Mayer cover that one looked awesome but let's face it it's going to cost more than cover price and uh, I, I I can't really speak for you but I'm guessing that you don't like to pay more than cover price right I'm definitely not gonna pay more than cover price, especially for variants. I know a lot of people do, and a lot of shops will mark them up, but it's something, you know, I'm cheap. You know, we have that in common. So if it's not cover price or less, I don't buy it. Yeah, you're cheap like I am, so that's okay. I mean, you don't even have your own shirt. But I picked up Web of Black Widow number one. This is the variant cover. I think this one's pretty cool. Um, I'm gonna give this one a read. I think it's a mini series. Uh, it might be ongoing, I'm not sure. But uh, Web of Black Widow, number one, not too shabby. And of course, something that I think we always buy, and these ones are a lot of fun. I got a ton of these. And uh, pretty happy I do, because they're only a buck. I mean, come on, there's no reason not to buy them. But uh, it's the Hulk, head of Banner, True Believers. I wish they would put the actual number of the book, what it's referencing, on there, so that way I could find it. There's no reference in the books either. And that's kind of surprising. I thought maybe if I flipped through the first page, it would tell me what issue of Incredible Hulk this was. Uh, maybe I'm just not seeing it, but uh, I picked that one up, only a dollar. Uh, then they had this other one, another True Believers Hulk book. Uh, so I picked that one up. Glad to see these back out. Uh, like I said last week, uh, our buddy Sam was all worried that we're, they were stopped making these. And of course that wasn't true. He got that wrong again. Um, so this is available and there's more coming next week. So that's pretty awesome. This series, I haven't read it, but man, the covers on this series, all the regular covers, really, have all been great. This is the Savage Avengers. This is number five. Another great book. Like I said, I haven't read it, but Jerry Duggan, I believe, is the one who's writing this. I probably got the first name wrong. Uh, actually, I'm pretty sure I did. But great looking series. I love the fact that who the characters are in here. I mean, look at the team. We've got Conan, Wolverine, Punisher, uh, let's see, Elektra. Venom, uh, Dr. Voodoo, I believe it is. Just a ton of great characters. It's not Dr. Voodoo, it's Brother Voodoo. Another great book. I picked up one of our favorites. Can you guess what it is? Okay, that's fine. Uh, it's The Punisher, number 15. Uh, has a great cover. Great Moon Knight on there. Who's that? Ghost Rider and Knight something? I can't remember that guy's name, but that's okay. I don't think anybody remembers that guy's name kind of cool very happy just the regular cover this next one a big series as we all know we all enjoy these this is the immortal Hulk number 23 this is another Alex Ross cover I have this book on two different pull lists at two different shops 
And so at one shop, I picked up this one. And the other shop, I picked up the variant, which is the wraparound cover. And it's not bad. I'm Some of these wraparound covers, like the Fantastic Four ones that I saw, I didn't care for them. But this one was pretty good. And I think there's another one coming out uh, for maybe, uh, what was it? Uh, Captain America? I'm, I'm probably wrong. But there was only like one or two other ones that looked pretty good. You're thinking about the Silver Surfer black cover. But I definitely picked this one up, so happy about that. And this next series, haven't read it yet. Saw a review. Uh, really enjoyed the review. It was actually uh, Drew Manchu did his review on this book, and I watched it. So you need to check out Drew Manchu, the reviews that he does. They're really good. But this book right here, House of X, this is number four of six. It's only a couple more to go. I really liked uh, the review and uh, sounds like there's some action in this one and that's one thing that this series was lacking was action and apparently like all these characters that are in this cover does not go well for these people um, unfortunately things go bad but of course with X-Men and multiple timelines that's going on uh, they're not gone for too long but looking forward to reading this and I think I have to get caught up on the last issue as well that's one thing about this series, and I will say this, another book came out this week, um, Doomsday Clock, which is number 11, and it's actually on the wall right behind you, um, but they came out, and that's a series that came out almost two years ago, and they're still working on the book, there's one more to go. This is also a 12 issue series between House of X and Power of X, and these are weekly, every week we get this, so this will be done literally in less than three months we will have every single issue, all 12, for the House of X and Power of X, or 10, whatever it is. And Doomsday Clock is still coming out. So we got one more to go on that one, and that's next year. Yeah, the first issue of Doomsday Clock came out January of 2018, and now we're seriously not looking until 2020 for the final issue to come out. So I'm kind of up to here with that. Yeah, that Doomsday Clock just frustrates the hell out of me to be honest with you. I mean I was all on board when it came out I was like oh this looks so cool I'm really excited to see these characters uh, blend with regular DC characters and here we are working on year three and we still don't have the full series so it's uh, it can get a little annoying I'll be happy when it's done and wrapped up but like I said it's not going to happen until next year but let's look at the ones you got I know you got some DC books and then I got some great independent books and I got some stories to go along with them, and I read a bunch of them. So I want to talk about that and see what you thought, because I know you read some too. But go ahead and show your DC books that you picked up. Yeah, I think I got like five or six of the DC books. I know my Doomsday Clock number 11 is sitting right there next to all the other ones. But I did pick up this dollar comic, the Detective Comics Batwoman 854. It's only a buck. That's kind of their version of the uh, True Believers, and I thought that was pretty cool. So I got that. Apparently that's the girl who's going to be in the uh, new Batgirl or whatever that is, Batwoman uh, show that the CW is doing. So that's kind of neat. And then of course I had to get the Batman number 181, the facsimile. I'm really liking these facsimiles quite a bit. Yeah, I'm liking the facsimiles that DC's putting out. That's only the third one that they've done. They did, uh, I think it was Detective Comics with the first Ra's al Ghul. And then they did the Swamp Thing first appearance. And now the first appearance... Uh, Poison Ivy. I think it's a, a home run for those. I hope they keep on doing them. Another one I picked up was Justice League 31. Another series I just buy. I've always been a Justice League fan. So I figure why not add this one. I think I have the whole run so far of this uh, volume of Justice League. So that's pretty cool. Another one is Neil Adams is doing the series The Batman vs. Ra's al Ghul. And that's kind of neat. Looking forward to meeting him. Yeah, we get to meet Neil Adams here next weekend at the Comic-Con. So that should be a lot of fun. I'm curious to see if he says anything about that book. I think he's doing the whole series, so that's kind of cool. And last one I got was Deceased, A Good Day to Die, number one, the tie-in variant cover. I like this one a lot. Really enjoyed the story. I like that they introduced more characters. I like this Deceased um, storyline that's going on. You know, I think it's a six-volume book or six issue book and I don't know how many more tie-ins they're doing but the more the better to be honest with you so very happy on this one I'm looking forward to issue I think five is the next one come out or six I don't know for sure I thought that was a great one shot I read it uh, for one 
first off great cover matina funky cold matina doing a good job again but the book itself i enjoyed it it was a little bit thicker book you know it's a 4.99 cover price and great story i liked it i liked the fact that it introduced some other characters that we haven't seen yet in the deceased uh, series so far and unfortunately it doesn't go well for them either but constantine being a major character that's always a good thing so i'm curious to see what they do with that some nice stuff you know actually more dc books than i normally get and pretty happy with my picks but i'm curious to see what your uh independent books were i know which one uh, the big one that you got that's kind of neat all right those are pretty good next week you get marvel and i'll get dc but for right now let me talk about some of the independent books that came out and of course we got to start with none other than spawn 300 look at that number 300 todd mcfawn i had to get this cover i really like the black and white this is the main cover but the black and white really shows McFarlane's artwork, and I like that. It kind of loses it a little on the color version. So I'm pretty happy I got that one. I'll probably get the Spider-Man 300 parody cover as well. That looks awesome, but I went back to the comic shop today, and they didn't have any, so they were sold out. I don't think this shop ordered a lot of them, so I might have to go somewhere else. Which one are you looking for? Yeah, I like that black and white one too. That's really cool. And also that 300 ASM one. That's neat as well. Missed out on that one. But I do like the J. Scott Campbell one. I think those are pretty cool. I wouldn't mind getting the black and white version of that one also. Yeah, I saw that one too. It looks pretty good. But, you know, honestly, I think a lot of these, unfortunately, are going to end up in the dollar bin because, you know, a lot of stores ordered a lot. I know at the place where I get a lot of my books, more than likely they'll end up in their grab bags that are five bucks for a grab bag of 10 books. And this will be a very easy book to spot because it is thicker. So I'm looking forward to that. Next one I got was this one, which I haven't read. And I actually just picked it up today because they didn't have it on Wednesday. But this is Triage by Dark Horse Comics. It looks pretty good. This is by Philip Sevi. Sevi? I don't know. Apparently he's doing the artwork and he's doing the story. So he's pulling double duty on this book and should be interesting. It's about like a nurse and like a futuristic warrior or a robot or something like that it's like these three characters that team up and they have to stop people from killing them or something like that i don't know i gotta read it find out more about it but kind of cool this one i want to talk but the last book that we cover i read it and i'm looking forward to talking to you about that one but this one i read also which is midnight vista okay and i have a question for you so this book is an alien abduction story and what this is it is the real life story of the author himself in this book what happens to this kid this kid is the author and apparently when this guy was young he was abducted by aliens and he was gone for like 10 11 years and then he shows up you know walking down the street naked type thing um you know let me ask you man what's your thoughts on aliens is that a is that a legit thing well, I've never seen The Little Green Man or nothing like that, but I do have an encounter story. Would you like to hear it? Yeah, you can go ahead and tell me. I mean, I've heard it before. I don't know if they want to hear it, but go ahead. So yeah, I'll share it with you. Long story short, about 10 or 12 years ago, I was working at this place. It was kind of out of the way. It was about an hour and a half drive from my house. And um, one night on the way home, I used to take the back roads home. It was late at night, around midnight and stuff, and there's nobody else on the road. I get to this one section and all of a sudden my car shuts off just goes totally dead and I'm just kind of cruising like coasting down the street the lights are off the engine turns off everything is off and I'm like what's going on I'm not a car guy yeah I, I remember that uh, but it only lasts for like 30 seconds all of a sudden everything turned back on and I kept on going on my way I didn't think anything of it uh, my buddy Damon who you know uh, we carpool we worked at the same place so the next morning um, he picked me up and we drove out to work and as we're driving out there I was telling him that story how the car turned off and he's more of a car guy and I figure he might know what I'm talking about anyway we don't think anything of it and then that night we got off work late at night yet again driving home in his car we literally get to almost the exact same point and his car does the same thing all the lights go off the engine turns off and we are coasting down the street we look at each other just kind of freaking out you know because this is this is really bizarre and all of a sudden again the car turns right back on like 30 seconds later and we just keep on going 
And uh, that night when we got home, both of us see that there's some uh, thing on the news talking about that there was a, quote, meteor that had crashed or something had crashed in that area. And it was on the news and apparently it happened a couple days before. I definitely know that Damon was freaked out about it. We meet up the next morning and as we're going to work, we see a NASA truck going down the freeway. I've never seen a NASA truck. It was going the same direction we were going towards we go to work and right in the same area where our car died. So that was my little encounter. I don't know if that means anything, but uh, that really happened. And my buddy Damon, he can collaborate that story, but uh, I've never had anything like that happen since. So you tell me, um, you know what? The truth is out there. Okay, last book I wanna talk about, and I read it, and honestly, the reason I bought this book was because of the title. The title itself sold me on the book. It's called Something is Killing the Children. I read this one, I actually got two copies. I got the variant copy, I thought that was pretty cool. One of my shops I go to had this copy, just one, and the other shop I go to had this copy, just one. So I figure I might as well get them both. One will be my reader, which is the main one, and then the variant, I'll probably just hold on to that, make sure it's nice and shiny. Um, but I read it, and um, I gotta tell you, it was interesting and it wasn't interesting. It was interesting in the fact that um, the artwork was really good, the plot line uh, flowed very well, but it was another monster story. It's a monster in the woods that's uh, apparently killing the children, and it introduces this character, this girl who names Erica, I believe, and she is like the monster slayer type thing. And that's kind of what she does. She's been called into this town to take care of the monster. And she meets up with like the surviving kid from a group of kids that were murdered. And uh, the kid kind of tells her what happened. And then she's able to identify exactly what class of monster this is. And she's on her way to go take care of business. Um, it was a little basic, I thought. I'm hoping it gets a little bit more deep. But uh, I'm gonna stick with it, at least to the second issue, see where it goes from there. But like I said, the title alone, Something is Killing the Children, sold me on the book before I even saw the uh, first page, before I saw the cover. It was totally a title buy. I liked that book, I thought it was good. You know, it was, had the creep factor going on. The little girl that was in the wagon, she literally had no legs. She had one eyeball and I think only one arm very creepy anytime uh anyone's missing all their limbs kind of creeps me out that's one thing and we had a good time you know because we did that book club with the uh, white whale and uh, john's comics with kids yesterday kind of reviewing this book and that was a lot of fun and they kind of felt the same way i did yeah the girl in the wagon was definitely uh uh creepy to say the least but there's a lot of creep factor to this book itself I'm hoping issue two kind of gets a little bit more deeper into that one girl. I think her backstory would be somewhat interesting. Yeah, we'll have to see where it goes in the next issue. Like I said, you know, I'm going to stick with it for one more. Um, this first one was okay. It did kind of interest me in the characters, but like I said, it was kind of basic. So we'll see where it goes from here, right? By the way, this is your shirt.